everyone, welcome back. I'm my AKA Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today I'm here with a blended malt. But not just any but not but not just any blended malts, I'm here with Nexar Grove from Weems Malts. So of course, first of all, a massive thank you to Weems Malts for sending me this sample. It's um, one that I've been enjoying for a while, but I recently just found that I had a little bit left, so I thought it'd be fun to do a review on it. And this one that I have here, it's a batch strength. So it's almost like cast strength, but you bottle the entire batch of this at a specific strain. So it sits slightly higher at 54% ABV. But since it's a mix of all these different casks, they've regulated the, the strength slightly, I would say. And this Nectar Grove is a blended malt, which of course means that it's a blend of all different single malts, and they're all from the Highlands. And this has then been finished in Madeira casks, so that is of course a fortified wine from Portugal. And I believe they also have two different versions of this, so they have the batch strength, which I have here, and then they also have the kind of normal release, which sits at 46% ABV. Weems Malts is of course quite a fascinating company, I would say, especially since they have their distillery King's Barns, which makes some lovely whiskey, so I can't wait to see what they're doing. They also have Darnley's Gin, which also sits at King's Barns, so if you're looking for a distillery where you can do both a gin and a whiskey tour, that's a good one to go to. And it's also not that far away from Edinburgh, because it's still located in the Lowlands. But Weems don't just have their single malt distillery and their gin at the moment, they also are independent bottlers, which is what you can see here when they've done their blended malts. One of their other blended malts, which I think is absolutely lovely, is the Hive. It's like full of kind of honey flavours, it's perfect in a hot toddy. I mean, if you saw the Hive Altipache I did a wee while ago, um, that was uh, from a recipe from my dear friend Tam, who works for the company, and the Hive was really a good one to, to have in that little cocktail. I have that recipe on my blog if you're interested in it, if you're interested, if you're interested, and I've put that link in the description here below. They have really interesting whiskies that they've bottled under their independent bottling range. Um, some really lovely Benahavens I've heard the rumours about. And I just the other day got a Klein Leash that I can't wait to try as well. But first of all, we're going to focus on the Nectar Grove. Let's start by having a look on the nose. Ooh. It's just, as soon as my nose kind of got close to the glass, it was just this kind of wonderful scent, tropical scent, that's almost like immediately transformed, transported me onto like walking on a beach in sunset and like in a, in a tropical heat where it's, you're surrounded by like tropical fruits. It was very, very intriguing. Oh, it is very nice. It's, um, Hmm. It's like an explosion of tropical fruits. It's like pineapple, it's mango, it's apricots and peaches and raisins and like dried fruits as well. But in a way, this tropical fruitiness makes me think more sunset fruit. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's more like evening fruits, like when you're just sitting down maybe on a balcony very comfort comfortably <laughs> I can't say that word comfortably 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 and there's a sunset the evening slightly cooler so it's still warm like you can wear t-shirts and shorts but it's this kind of warming breeze and everything's kind of calm and toned down but it's still this kind of tropical sweetness And it has a hint of oakiness, which makes it seem slightly denser. It's like um, orange candy. Orange candy, those kind of sunset evening tropical fruits and oakiness. Yeah, very, very tropical. A delicious nose, I would say. It's stunning. Um, <laughs> I kind of lost track of what I was doing, but let's have a little taste. Just lunge it up. The alcohol really gives it a kick and it's 
sweeter on the nose, I would say. Sweeter on the nose than on the palette. It's a little bit more malty on the palette. But still like a malty oaky note in the middle. That's like surrounded by really soft tropical fruits. I'm gonna add some water to this later on as well, just to see if it opens up a bit with water. It has some tropical spices as well. Like there's a mixture between like cinnamon and cardamom, but then there's like a bitter spice in there as well. But like a vegetal bitter spice, which I can't really think of. It's almost like a like basil, tarragon kind of vegetal bitter spice. It's tricky to explain, but it's like mixed in with the cinnamon and the cardamom. A little bit more oaky on the nose now. It's still quite orangey, I would say, on the palette. But I'm gonna go get my pipette and my water just to see if it changes. So I'll be right back. Here we go, some water. Yeah, now the kind of oakiness got very much toned down and it's more fresher fruits. Not so much sunset fruits anymore. Ooh. The maltiness and the oakiness has really kind of chilled out a bit. And the spice as well. Now it's, I think I prefer it with the water because it just makes everything a little bit softer. Softer and fruitier and I think that also has to do with the mouthfeel becomes oilier. Before I think the spice was so sharp that it made it feel drier but now when it's just lower in alcohol, it just coats the palette in a completely different way. It makes it more oily and those kind of fruity flavours cling to the palette more. On the nose it's more citrusy. And it's, yeah, the oakiness, you can kind of, if you look for it, you can kind of find it, but it's like underneath the fruitiness now. The spice is still there, but that bitter note's definitely been very reduced and the fruitiness comes out much nicer. I'm going to add a little bit more water just to see what happens on the next step. This is why it's so fun to experiment with water, because you never know kind of what to expect. Because sometimes when you add water, you can enhance more of the flavours that you already liked in the whiskey. But adding water can also enhance some of the flavours you might not like so much in the whiskey. So, I would always say try it neat first and then experiment with water or if you're you have maybe your favorite whiskey and you know you like to drink it with ice or with water then go for that. Ice is of course an interesting subject as well <laughs> because the only problem is that you can't control the dilution and the cold elements so if you chill your whiskey down there's flavors that are going to be harder to pick out. It's technically going to make it taste less which is why some people like it but some people just like drinking something cold, like if it's a hot summer's day for example. So it's just, just drinking whatever way you'd like it. That's the baseline of everything. Now we've become more fudgy on the nose. Fudge and citrus. <laughs> what a weird combo, but it's, yeah. Fudgy on the palate as well, it's like more toffee notes, but with that citrus and the oakiness. But then there's like clouds of fruitiness surrounding it. Hmm. I would say 
it would be so fun if you gave me these three whiskies at these three different alcohol levels because I would definitely get different things from each of them. It feels sweeter now. That is fascinating. So I think the middle one, so the one when I added the first uh, batch of water, if you'd say, was probably my favorite one because now it got slightly too fudgy and I really, really like that tropical fruitiness. But yeah, yeah, I, I would of course love to hear if you have tried anything from Weems Maltz, have you tried the Nectar Grove perhaps? What did you think? Please put it in the comments below. I love hearing your thoughts. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would of course be absolutely thrilled if you would consider using my affiliate links with either the Whiskey Exchange, Master of Malt or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All of that information is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon, my Teespring shop, my Instagram, my website and all of that stuff, if you're curious about that. But of course, a massive thank you to all my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I really appreciate that you guys want to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. And of course, if you like seeing behind the scenes, some exclusive content and help me decide what videos to do in the future, you can check out the Patreon as well. But as always, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava. School.